Creo Parametric 4.0. The next lesson is going to do another assembly, lesson 20, and it's the valve assembly. So we're going to start off by downloading some of the parts from the website and click on the valve assembly and we will save the zip file. Well, let's just open the zip file. Skip a step. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and put it in the desktop. You can put it in a, any folder that you wish. <coughs> Remember, you have to have that as your working directory. So <coughs> select working directory, desktop, parts. OK. I'll shut this off. And we will start a new assembly. And it's the sub-assembly for the valve. And let's open up one of the parts quickly to see what unit has been used. So we're going to go to File and Prepare, Properties, <coughs> excuse me, and it says Custom. So I think what's going to happen, it's going to all come in, no matter what it is, it's going to go into the assembly OK. As long as we select our assembly, and one of the things we should do is at least check the units. So it doesn't make any difference which one of these we open. And we could go over to Tools and Model Information, and it's in metric. So even though it says custom for the files, which I'm not sure why that's happening, could be just in the conversion process. These were created uh, over 20 years ago. So we're going to start off by selecting our units. And we're going to select Change. Millimeters, set, interpret, OK, and close. And we have to do this when we do the assembly, too. This is the sub-assembly. So first component to bring in would be the shaft. And the preview of the shaft is almost the same color as what I gave the shaft when I created it. So what I'd like to do is, first of all, let's view everything in our model tree. And let's open this up. It's always easier to do it here. View and go into our appearances and just <coughs> change the color. Close it, and now we'll assemble our second component. And the second one is the valve plate. And we're going to pick on a surface, another surface. And it's not going to be normal. We want it to be coincident. And then we're going to select one of the holes, the other hole, and continue on. Right mouse button, new constraint. And so you can select the axes too. That's a valid selection. And let's take a look at the placement. So it says it's fully constrained. All right. So the next one is going to be the arm assemble. And we'll select the large hole here and the shaft at this end. And I can drag this. I want to see it on the same side. Now, my second set, I'm going to select here on the key seat and right mouse button until I get this one. And this one says normal. So let's try coincident. Doesn't like it. Let's try parallel. And then let's flip. OK. And the last one, we'll add one more constraint. And we'll select here and here. And we do want to make that distance and back it off a certain amount. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll go into my 
front view and hidden line turn off the datum feature so we can see it a little bit better and you can see the key seat here and I'm just going to drag it a little bit so it's kind of approximately correct check standard orientation we're going to go back over to our shading with edges so we can see everything <clears throat> okay so the subassembly is completed so I'm going to start a new assembly and I'm going to make sure in the very beginning I go and prepare it by having my units set correctly and we'll turn these all on and again unfortunately you still have to go back and turn on the filters no they're okay all right good all right so we want to bring that other component in there so assemble it is in session and we're going to put it at the default constraint again like so no nope, let's say I'm doing this wrong I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that one we don't want that we want to bring in our housing first so assemble and that one we want to have at our default like so and I'll shut off all of this for now now right mouse button assemble in session we have our sub assembly and I'm going to select the shaft here and the hole I'm going to go drag it to the other end partly at least and I'm going to go in my second set of constraints I'm going to use this counter bore hole here and the flange on the bottom and that's coincident and I think we're going to turn on the datum planes and we're going to add one more constraint we have allow assumptions on we could turn this off and we need to pick a couple of planes so that we can revolve this if we want so I'm going to select the subassembly datum plane and datum plane that runs 90 degrees to it and it says normal but we want to change that to angle <clears throat> and that gives us a chance to change this to anything that we want and we can keep it like that we can put it back we can alter it when we're in the assembly we don't have to be in the edit definition of it okay we're still missing the plate or the cover I should say and I'm going to select the hole I'll open another little view of it little window and I'm going to select the hole and the shaft and then I'm going to move this that's probably the best thing to do like so and we we'll select a couple more surfaces this one here and the one on the bottom or the top it doesn't make any difference if you get the wrong not the wrong one but you can always flip it and this is going to be coincident you can see it's embedded in the model so here's where we do want to flip it like so and 
Many times it's smart enough to know where it, it's supposed to go, but we do need to add another constraint here, and that's for the hole. And we're done. All right. Now, I'm going to go back over to the subassembly and click on the edit so we can see the degrees. And I'm going to go back to 90, see what it looks like. I have to regenerate it. And it's fully open. Okay, now let's design a component in the assembly. I'm going to click Create here, and this is going to be the key. Now, normally you wouldn't create a key like this. You just take one out of the catalog and use it. We're going to locate default datums, align coordinate system to coordinate system, OK. And I'm going to select the assembly. Let's see, do I want to set the assembly? Or how about the subassembly coordinate system? I think I will create it with the subassembly. Everything gets grayed out. It's inactive. And you can see where the datum planes are here. And we're going to create a extrusion using that datum plane. And we'll go into the 2D and maybe reorient a little bit. There we go. Zoom up, turn off the planes, and go in and select hidden line. So this is the key seat in the shaft, and this is the key seat in the arm. So we want those as references. Right mouse button, references, select both of those. These All these other ones are not necessary. Unfortunately, it turned it when I did that, but that's not a big deal. Can, I can reorient the view if I wish, which I should do, just so that you can see it similar to what's in the book. So let's see if we pick this, what will happen. Okay. It's kind of interesting. So whatever you pick for reorientation, put a reference there. Right down here, which I really don't need one. So we're going to go to Arc and Center Ends, Center. And we're going to stay within the confines of the shaft. We're just going to go down here. And when it lines up across, you'll see the little dash line, dotted line. So there's my arc. I want to have a line coming up from there, going across. Again, watch your little constraints. How many dimensions should I have? I should only have one. Now, the dimension I might prefer would be this one right here, like so. And uh, let's make that 14. I'm going to turn the model. Check. And I want to go up to a surface. So I'm going to take and select two selected and right mouse button until I get the key seat on one side. And then under options here to the other side, two selected to the key seat on the other side. like so. And we'll go shady, and we'll see our part. It is active, so if I wanted to, I could do something right here. Let's say I wanted to uh, put an, a round, auto round it. So now it's got a little tiny round on it. So that's creating a component in the assembly mode called top-down design. All the references were external except for the one dimension. So basically it's being determined by the key seat that it's referencing both up to on one side and the other. 
and also in the the arc and in the arm part. So the arc is in the shaft. The arm is controlling it on the other end. So let's activate the assembly so we can see it all. And let's go and do a little analysis and do an interference. So we've got some interferences with the shaft and pretty much everything. So basically, something's wrong maybe with the shaft. Let's assume that. The shaft is showing up three separate places here. So let's just do some measuring. So we're going to measure the diameter. We'll start off with the shaft. It's 16. The hole is 14. The hole here is 14. 14. So basically the shaft is too big. So let's just go simply and change it and see what happens. Go back to model. I'm going to activate it. And I think what I'll do is I'll just go and click on the feature, edit the definition, and go into my internal. Well, before I do that, let's just double click on it and see what happens. Or single click and put dimension. So I guess got one dimension. That's for the distance there. So we'll go back over here edit the internal sketch and take a look at that and wow that's about the worst design thing I've ever seen somebody actually has one radius in here and their constraints are such that it's actually only one dimension and everything else is using constraints except for the distances here so something's drastically wrong because we don't have any diameters So right mouse button, dimension, select the center line and the line and the center line, middle mouse button, and we'll delete that. Okay. Now, we could go in here, we see the word, we see the constraint equal. We could get rid of those, equal, equal, equal. And click on it. Let's do this. Let's continue with center line, line, center line, 16. All right. And we have one more here. It's still active. So we can go line, center line, line. Either direction is okay, in other words. And we have our dimensions. So as I recall, this one's supposed to be 14. And I know these are stacked up. You can redimension them if you wish. I'll leave them like they are right now. Clean them up just a tiny bit. All right, so now we have all our diameter dimensions, which we would need under normal circumstances, not radiuses. Check. So let's activate the assembly and go into my view. Let's just do it from here. I'm going to move it around a little bit. And now let's try the global interference. So we still have one place. Oh, because we never changed that. So this where the shaft flange here goes into the housing, it's still interfering. So as part of the project, go in and find out what those two dimensions are. 
and alter the one that you want to alter. You can change the one in the housing or you can change the other one. It's your choice. Okay. And that concludes lesson 20. I hope you will watch this at least two or three times before you do the actual modeling. And you can actually watch the video on another device like your iPad or a, a laptop while you're doing the work.